Welcome back to Golf Quest, everyone. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through how I took my small one and a half car garage and turned it into a golf simulator space without giving up the entirety of the garage just for the golf simulator. I'll also break down the size footprint of my sim space, including my mat and my net, to show you how much room it actually takes up. Now, converting my garage into a simulator space without giving up the entire garage wasn't something that I actually thought was possible at the beginning. And there were three major obstacles that stood in my way, which kept me from thinking that I could actually get it done. I'm gonna talk about those three obstacles and how I overcame each one, including why I decided to do my simulator build without the use of a projector. Finally, at the end of the video, I'll break down the cost for this sim build. Hey, really quickly, if you're visiting for the first time or maybe you're returning and you haven't hit subscribe in the bottom corner there, we'd sure appreciate it. I'm not gonna beg, but it sure would be great if you considered subscribing. Okay, let's jump in. Now the first obstacle that I had to overcome was I didn't think I actually had the space for a simulator. My original space looked like this. The dimensions of the garage are as follows. At the widest point, it is 13 and a half feet across. And from the edge of the counter at the back of the garage to the garage door is 17 and a half feet. However, in the corner of the garage, I lose more space due to a diagonal wall. The counter ran all the way from the back of the garage around one side, almost to the front of the garage on the right hand side. Now, I don't need to park my car in the garage, but I couldn't afford to lose my entire space just for the sim. I wanted to salvage a lot of the counter space for storage and a small workspace, and I also needed to keep room for our bikes. I decided I could use the first eight and a half feet of counter space and storage on the right side. This would allow me to move the bike storage to that space, leaving my entire left wall of the garage empty and freeing up space for the sim. Now with these changes, I calculated that I could fit my net and my hitting mat with enough clearance to swing a club, but it would mean that my mat would have to be very, very close to my impact net. In the past, I would have thought that having my hitting mat this close to my net would have killed any dream I had at having a functional simulator. But enter our hero, stage left, Skytrack. Being photo-based, Skytrack just needs a small window to operate, making it ideal for small space simulators and making a space like mine a legitimate contender for a simulator. So with a little rearranging and the help of Skytrack, my first obstacle, was overcome. Mm, sort of. I still had another space issue. The second obstacle I faced was my garage door. I had two problems with my door. The first was I had a traditional garage door opener where the arm of the garage door opener ran down the center of my garage, effectively blocking any swing space in the air. I also had storage above the garage door and I would need to remove this storage space again in order to be able to swing a club inside. But even if I got rid of the shelving, it still wouldn't solve the problem of the garage door opener itself. So to overcome obstacle two, I had a side mount opener installed and had the garage door track rerouted so that the door opened as close to the ceiling of the garage as possible. The opener sits on the side wall near the ceiling. We had to cut out a section of the drywall in order to make the install fit, but now the garage door is completely out of the way with nothing getting in the way of my swing and I can play with the door open or closed. Problem solved. Obstacle number three. Would a projector work functionally in my space? When I first started, I had the dream of projecting the image of the simulator onto my hitting net. In fact, when I ordered the Spornia SP7 that I have, I also ordered the projector screen add-on. However, as I planned on my sim build more and more, I didn't know where to mount the projector and also didn't know what projector would be decent for my space. Eventually, I decided I would start with a TV on the wall and view the results of my shots there. This actually turned out to be really great. There is a small delay between shot and display on the Skytrack anyway, so by the time my swing is finished, I simply look up at the TV facing me and view the results of the shot. As an added bonus, I don't need to worry about the room being dark or the projector being bright enough. Not having a projector has not detracted from my simulated experience in the least. Now I know people would disagree with me, but I don't find hitting into a net with a target and then looking up at your screen to view the result a problem at all. I feel like I can work on my game, I can enjoy playing just the same as if I had this it projected onto a screen. Okay, so let's take a little bit of time to go over the parts of the sim and how much each part costs. We're gonna start with the hitting surface, the mat. Now, this advice was given to me and I'm gonna give this advice to anyone out there who's thinking about building their sim. Don't cheap out on the mat. Make sure you just go and get the one, the high quality one that you think is best for you right out of the gate. Uh, I know too many people that have started with a mat just having to switch it afterwards, and I'm one of them. I started with the Country Club Elite mat, or better known as the CCE. Now, I have to say, I loved the mat. I thought it looked great, it could take a tee, um, I loved hitting off of it, 
The problem is my body didn't love the mat. I started getting aches and pains after a few months of use and it just started getting worse. So I did some more research and a lot of people have that same problem with the CCE. So I decided to switch to what I have now, which is the Fiberbuilt Studio 4x7 Grass Series mat. This mat is supposed to be the best one on the market for ease on the joint, and I've been quite pleased with it. As an added bonus, this mat never moves. Its base is so heavy and so stable that it never slides on you. You don't have to put carpet grippers underneath. It's amazing. It stays in the spot that it's supposed to be and doesn't budge. Also, as an added bonus, if you're a SkyTrack user like myself, the SkyTrack can sit right next to it level. You don't even need the little leveling feet for the SkyTrack. I'm quite happy with it, and I would recommend it to anyone who is looking to get a new mat. Next up is the star of the sim build, the SkyTrack, without which I just wouldn't have a simulator in my garage. It's that simple. Some people list the downsides, like the bit of the delay between your shot and it's showing the result on the screen. Honestly, I don't even see that as a negative. I've learned now to really feel what the shot does and predict the outcome before I see it on the screen, which I actually find really useful. As far as putting the ball directly on the red dot, if you're just hitting balls on the range, you can pull a ball over with your club and hit it too, just like you would on the driving range. It's portable, it's functional, the battery lasts a long time. I love this unit. I also love how it's wireless, which I tried to make most of my sim build wireless. The next part of my sim build was an iPad Air. I like to go with an iPad, even though the graphical interface isn't quite as good on something like E6 Connect. It's portable, again, wireless. It holds a charge for a long time, and it's a cheaper alternative to a high-end gaming machine. I also purchased this iPad stand from Amazon, which I am very pleased with. It's weighted, it fits in a nice space. Again, just a nice clean look for the simulator. In order to get the image from the iPad to the TV wirelessly, I picked up an Apple TV and it's done the trick beautifully. And this TV I picked up really, really cheap. It's just a 43 inch TV, but it fit my space nicely. And again, I picked it up on sale, it was cheap. The next part of my sim build was a hitting net. Now these can get really, really pricey. And through a friend, I got a tip to try out this net from the company called Spornia. And this is the Spornia SP7. I've really been happy with it. It pops open, it's up in minutes, and it so far, it's held up really, really nicely. The balls hit and return beautifully. Okay, a few other details here. We have the Kramer, a must for any great simulator space. I installed some um, gym mats on the wall for added protection, in case my son decided to ricochet one off the concrete. And then I took the edging leftover edging from some of those mats and I turned them into a golf holder. So it actually fits quite nicely. Just have to, they're all labeled, sit in there beautifully. Just added some glue, it was great. Installed the little golf bookshelf. The finished bike rack on the sign right against the wall, which was nice, saving me a lot of space and allowing me to swing. And some room underneath for the lawnmower. Also added this fake turf from Lowe's. For this space, that cost me about $160, and that included the carpet tape that I put on the concrete to hold it down. It just adds a nice finishing touch. Heater for the wintertime, fan for the summertime. Mini fridge and microwave, perfect for all your beverage needs. Lots of storage underneath the shelves, some workspace still. And then behind the simulator, we have your typical recycling. About a two foot walkway up to the door and into the house. So that wraps it up for us for now. Hopefully that video was helpful, especially if you're thinking about planning your own simulator build. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. We'll get back to you and we'd love to hear from you. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, we'd sure appreciate it if you hit that red button in the corner. It's free and it helps us out. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time on Golf Quest.